Hi, my name is John Cooksey, and I'm here with Bob Nagy, host of the instructional videos, the Sony Alpha Made Easy. And we have two 90-minute DVDs that cover everything about that, but for right now, we're going to show you a little tips and tricks and some secrets people may not know about. The first one, Bob, being, don't you hate it when you take pictures and you have to press a button twice to delete it? Absolutely. You know, you're, you're a smart person. You're used to the camera. You don't have to have two push buttons to do one action. So luckily, on the Alpha 700, you can do this with one push button and you remember how to do this I'm gonna go ahead and give us a feed directly from the camera if you um, go to the menus and go to the very last menu and then go down to the second choice over here delete first you can put this on delete first and that knocks out one whole step when you're pressing if it was on cancel you'd have to go up to delete Are you sure you want to delete it no have it come up on delete first and that will make it one step process for deleting images well, while you're in the menus, why don't you show us the display screen? Because I also hate when I have to take a picture sort of in a up-and-down portrait kind of pose, and you want to oh, have yeah. the display screen in that kind of thing. This camera does something very unique. As you turn the camera, not only in playback mode will it shift, but it also shift your display screen. Can you show how to do that? Sure. Now, remember, there are two, two things that are being shifted. Either you're shifting your image or you're shifting the display screen. So you're, you're gonna, these are two different uh, things on the menu. And you can go back to the playback number one here. And if I go down to the bottom here, playback display is auto-rotate. Now, this is where the position center inside the camera will automatically know which way you've taken the picture and it'll auto rotate the picture during playback so right now that's on auto rotate you can put it to manual if you want keep that on auto rotate and it'll keep the image directly straight up even if you've taken it with the camera cocked over at 90 degrees in a vertical thing but remember that also as well you can uh, set that the information on the screen auto rotates and that's in your custom menu sub menu 3 right over here with record info display so we let's, have that on auto rotate I'm going to show you how that, that goes let's go to camera two. absolutely so if I'm holding the camera over here let's take a look at the close up on the camera there's your nice and arm there we there's go my arm yeah if we have it over here and we press that shutter halfway down we're going to see that we see the information on the screen if we turn the camera it'll automatically rotate it to horizontal so it knows which way you're holding the camera and automatically rotates it. it's really handy now don't get all confused about these buttons and everything because the important thing to know is in these instructional videotapes we cover all those menus, how to get to them, how to do everything else. Another great thing is a tip about if you're a professional but also are taking personal pictures with a camera, well you don't want to be blending the, the pictures. The very easy way to do this is to have two cards and assign them to two different jobs. Why don't you show how to do that? Well, the deal is if we look on the side of this camera, let's look on cam 3 over here, we can, see that, we can see that this uh, camera can take two memory cards at once and that is the compact flash card over here plus the Sony little Sony card goes in here and you can select in the menu which one you want to use so say you're on a shoot you're out there you're doing a wedding in the morning I'm gonna pop it onto my 2 gig compact flash then I'm doing that family reunion in the afternoon I don't have time to go home and dump images I'm just gonna switch over the memory to the other card so I can have a ton of memory in here and sequester which shoot I want on which card and our instructional videos if you don't know will tell you how to go step by step through that particular function. But one great secret about this camera that a lot do doesn't have is that many people buy this camera and don't use the custom button function. Would you explain how, why that is so good and how to set that up? Well, sure. Let's take a look at the back of the camera again over here, and we can see that on the back is a C button. The C button, the custom button, right above the function button. That could be your best friend. Yeah, that could be your best friend because, you know, there's going to be something you do all the time, and in the menu, you can set that to any one of the functions. So I, I'm changing ISO all the time, changing sensitivity. Well, bam, I can hit that C button. I'm right into the, to the ISO menu, and I can ch change that right on the fly or something else you might find. That's totally experiential, sure. personal preference. I like to shoot a lot of shots of people with the sky in the background. I is overblowing the exposure, but with that custom, I can set it to a custom higher exposure compensation and know if I hit that C button, that'll take care of it for me instantly and then go back to my regular exposure settings. Now let's talk about something really cool, the remote commander. Let's get a shot of this uh, right here. Right out of the box, all the functions on this will not operate right away. So one real important tip is to how to make this remote commander do all the things it could say it do right out of the right. right out of the box. Right. Now the deal is on here, let's take a look go ahead right on show you right on the top of the camera. 
uh, the drive mode is the way you get into the turning on the remote commander. The reason that you want to be able to turn the remote commander on and off is because you might have another person with a Sony camera at the same shoot using their remote commander, and you don't want them to, to turn your camera off or take pictures with your camera. So as soon as I hit the drive mode button, let's take a look from directly inside the camera, we can see that we're in our drive mode selection area. And when you push our multi-position controller on the back of the camera, we go through all the selections here, bracketing and such. And the very last one is remote commander. So when we turn that on, the camera will respond. Let's look at the front of the camera again with its little infrared detector up here. Which means you have to keep the remote out front. It's not right. going to work. It may work to the side, but it, there may be some dead spots in the back. Exactly. So that's what you're shooting for, this, this little area over here. And this is the, uh, it picks it up actually right here. This actually sends uh, information out and, and focus assist beams. So remember that this area is the area you're going to have to hit with the remote commander. Of course, remember that you're, you're not going to be touching the camera or having your hand over it over here because you're probably going to be have this on a tripod. That's why they are allowed some of the sensors to be on the handle. And you see this here, I want to show you too. Look at this little embedded metal sensor. The camera can tell when you're holding it. Which is really important because if you look at the back of the camera, there's another sensor here which the camera can tell what your eye's looking at right. in the camera. So what that does is two things. John just put his finger over there. The camera thought he was putting his eye up to the camera, and I could feel the lens focusing because the automatic focus comes on on the camera. Plus, it shuts off the, the display on the back to save power because if your eye's up to the viewfinder, you don't need to read the LCD. You can't read it. So it saves you power, and it saves also you power. knows where your eyes right. are. And it corroborates between the grip sensor, this electric sensor here. It knows when you're holding the camera and when you've got your eye up to it. I can tell you, this camera is as though the Sony engineers looked at every other manufacturer and said, how can we best them on every feature? And, and going back to the remote, when you have your remote set up basically the way he did, uh, Bob showed you, you can then use this to display your pictures in a slideshow mode or one at a time mode, which is great. So you can uh, be doing a display at a trade show or whatever, take some pictures in the morning and go back and give your little sort of pseudo PowerPoint demonstration, not have to have the camera in your hand and these display on the screen. If you at one of those conventions, another thing you may not know about this camera for the very highest large screen resolution, you have to use something called the HDMI output, which is going to go into all new projectors, or pretty much this year, or they may have it already. Yep. Show them where the HDMI connector is. All right, let's take a look at the side of the camera again. And we can see on the side, we have all of our waterproof connectors over here. Well, basically, when you open this small one over here, you've got your video I.O. Bottom one being all your composite stuff. I.O. meaning input, input output. output. And above it, first I've ever seen on a camera like this, HDMI, high quality digital output to interface with your high definition widescreen television. It has the selections in the menus to change from 1080 to 720. As well, when you're hooking this to Sony, Bra Sony Bravia televisions, it automatically talks to the camera and sets it into a special picture wow. playback mode for ultra high, high resolution. resolution. Yep. And the last thing we're going to go over here is basically a weird thing that this camera does, and you think, why would you do it? Allow you to take pictures without a lens on the camera, and most won't allow you to do this and uh, explain why you'd want to do that. Uh, there are three reasons that you'd want to do that. Uh, I, I have a scientific background. When the lens is attached to the camera, there's a computer in the lens. There's lots of contacts in there and it is talking to the camera at all times, telling it how far the image is away and all this kind of stuff. It's got a whole bunch of connectors on it. Well, when you take this off the camera, the camera knows, I don't have a lens. I shouldn't be able to take a picture, right? But in the menus, you can set it to be able to take a picture. Why? When you hook this up to a microscope in a laboratory, when you slide this onto a, a telescope mount where you're going directly into a telescope, you need to be able to take a picture without talking to a lens. And this will take tremendous astrophotography pictures and microscope pictures. And the third reason would be? Oh, the third reason. Well, I'm going to show you this little cap over here on our camera three. Now, this is the cap that came protect the body on the camera. Well, here's a little th crazy thing that some of us advanced photographers do. We go back to the ancient history days before there were lenses. T here's something you can experiment with. You're probably not going to use this cap too much. Go ahead and take a quarter inch drill, drill a hole in the center, and then take a piece of aluminum foil and cover the hole in the back with a, a very small piece of aluminum foil, scotch taped around the hole. Then go to the front with a little hole and you see the aluminum foil. Take the finest sewing needle you can get and put the smallest hole right in the center. Then put this cap on the back on the front of your camera body and you have a 12 megapixel pinhole camera that will take pictures at about f200 
and, with no lens. And if you, so you're going to need a lot of light here. Right? <laughs> a lot of light, take so, it outdoors. So I would say just go to Flickr or Google Images and look at the images and type in pinhole camera. You get some real fantastic old fashioned, especially if you put them in sepia or, or black and white. That's about all the time we have now, though. In, if you felt you've learned something in this uh, section under 10 minutes, we urge you to get the full instructional videos, which are two 90 minute videos of all this good stuff thrown at you. Three hours. Slow it down and take things step by step, and you'll understand everything about the relationship with ISO and depth of field and shutter speed and this camera and all the tips and tricks that you can learn from this are amazing. If you can imagine just learning a little bit in 10 minutes, imagine having a depth, yes. in depth on everything that's we on the camera. Recover it completely. So that's www.elitevideo.com. Also look online here. We're also going to try to post some actual sections from this video so you can learn a little Don't bit. Don't slog through the manual. Become an expert in a few hours. We've already invested a lot of money yeah. in this camera, so it's worth investing just a very small micro amount more to learn everything there is to know about the camera and turbocharge your photography abilities.